Hello there, Algebra 1, and welcome to another lesson here at 9.4. This is essentially part 2, factoring trinomials. So here we have factoring for trinomials, and this is the opposite. Remember that when we had two binomials, and say we had x plus 1 and x plus 3, uh, we would FOIL, okay, x squared, and eventually get to 4x plus 3, we are going to be going backwards from the trinomial to the FOIL state. A little more challenging than FOIL. First off, always check for GCF. Um, we do not have that for number five here. The idea is what you want to do is list out the factors. I call this the little factor tree method. Um, 90, we can think of as one times 90. Um, we can also think of it as uh, 9 times 10. Uh, there's 2 and 45. There's a few options. But what you are looking for is factors of C that add to B. And where that comes from is factors of we call 90 our C value. And we call the number in front of N the b value. So they have to be factors of the last value, c, that add to b. So we're looking for a combination that adds to negative 1. Um, now, one thing I didn't mention here is that we're dealing with negative 90, which means these factors, one's going to be positive and one is going to be negative. If you notice, negative 9 plus 10, that would equal positive 1. But if we would flip that around and do 9 and negative 10, that would equal negative 1. What that means is this is our factor pair. We would write this answer as n plus 9 and n minus 10. If you were to go through and do FOIL to check, you would end up taking n squared minus 10n plus 9n and minus 90 which would get you back where we started. Factors of C that add to B. That is the name of the game. Uh, another one here. So we always want to check for the GCF first. So thinking about 6, 18, and 3, 24, those all have a greatest common factor of 6. So we can bring that 6 out and express this as n squared, 18 divided by 6 is 3n, and 324 divided by 6 is 54. Great idea to have a calculator with you. That is the first step. Then we need to write out the factors of 54. Um, let me show you a little trick in a graphing calculator how to find the factors of a number. So maybe you're saying, Mr. D, I don't know all of my factors. Well, this should help here. What I'm going to do is go under y equals, and I'm going to list 54, and I'm going to divide that by x. Now, if you go to the table, second graph, so again, I did 54 divided by x under y equals, and then I go to the table. This here lists all the factors. 1 and 54, 2 and 27, 3 and 18, uh, 4 and 13.5. You wouldn't want that one. But we have at least a few factors to get us started. 1, 54, 2 and 27, and 3 and 18, and 6 and 9. In this case, we're looking for the ones that have a difference of negative 3. So if you think I could have negative 9 and positive 6 equal negative 3, then you're on the right track. So that final answer would be the 6 out front. Don't forget it. Um, n plus 6 and n minus 9. That is your answer. Keep in mind you could actually also have n minus 9 and n plus 6, they're the same thing, um, then it is important which one has the positive and which one has the negative. So a little calculator trick 
for you there. Let's look at a few more. These are going to take some practice. So first step, we see 5, negative 10, and negative 240. Chances are it's a GCF. You can bring that out, 5m squared minus 2m, uh, 240 divided by 5 is 48. And in this case, we need factors of 48. So y equals 48 divided by x. Going to go to the table and list those factors. Now, you might be a factoring pro and know several of the factors. So writing them down or just going through, it's looking like 6 and 8 have the difference of negative 2. Um, this would need to be a negative 8, and we'd need to have a positive 6 to get there. Um, m plus 6 and m minus 8. That would be it there. And let's look at a few more. Um, once again, bring out a 5. We're looking at n squared minus 1n minus 150 divided by 5. 30. If you know your factors of 30, that would be 6 and 5. Uh, and we need it to add to a negative. So negative 6, positive 5. And that helps from there. A uh, few more examples. Here we have a positive C value and a negative. If that happens, let's bring out the GCF. 72 divided by 2. If this last number is positive and the middle number is negative, both factors are going to have to be negative. So we would be looking at, if we think of 36 divided by x, we'd be looking at negative 6 and negative 6. Neither of those add to negative 13. Uh, negative 4 and negative 9, that equals negative 13. So we're looking at a minus 4 and a minus 9. Don't forget, GCF out front. And there is your answer. Now, last example. I'm going to leave you with something else. Um, both positive. If both fa are positive, both factors will also be positive. Uh, GCF first. So bring out a 6. R squared plus 5R plus 24 is 4. And you might be thinking 2 and 2, but that doesn't add to 5. So don't forget about 4 and 1 itself. And that is what will be your factors. Okay. Um, again, just to highlight, it doesn't necessarily matter what order they go in as long as the plus is with the plus and so forth. Here's a little graphic to help you remember. So if you are factoring a um, x squared plus bx plus C, both factors are going to be positive. If you're factoring um, AX squared minus BX plus C, both of them will be negative. And if you're factoring AX squared either plus or minus, but minus C, you're going to have one positive and one negative. Factoring is something that is very important that you master so please try out those practice problems reach out for help um, search Khan Academy and other um, places as well for help if you need good stuff guys try out those practice